Hey friends, welcome to Coaching Conversations and today we are going to talk about body work or somatic work or getting into your body's center of intelligence to do Enneagram work. Uh, this is something that is super uncomfortable for me if I'm just going to be honest. Body work is my least practiced, least accessed type of work. I prefer to think and sometimes feel, although even that I'm not a huge fan of, I like to logically solve things. I want to understand, I want to study. And I posted a TikTok a couple of days ago that just hit me right in the heart of how many times I take to the books and try and study and figure out Enneagram stuff and understanding in order to avoid the actual work that I need to do to grow. And oftentimes the work that we need to do to grow is embodiment work, getting into our bodies and listening to our bodies. And this is something that we are often not very good at. <laughs> this is something that we are often um, actually going the opposite direction, trying to silence our bodies, trying to control our bodies, trying to minimize the effect that our bodies have on us. And it's not until <laughs> oftentimes some sort of catastrophic event that our bodies will not be silenced anymore, whether it's some sort of injury or whether it's some sort of autoimmune disease or just pure exhaustion that sh our bodies will say, wait a minute, listen to me, listen to what I have to say, listen to what I know is going to be best for you. And oftentimes it's not until we hit those points that we start to understand and fall in love with what it means to work with our bodies rather than working against them. And what does this have to do with Enneagram? Well, so often the work that we need to do is something that we are unaware of. A huge part of Enneagram work is bringing up awareness, bringing up awareness as to our ego's patterns, bringing up awareness as to why we shy away from certain things, why we always do other pattern behaviors. All of that is typically hidden from our awareness, from our mental awareness. Sometimes it's even hidden from our feelings. We've gotten so good at suppressing our feelings that we don't, we don't feel them very well, but our bodies know. Our bodies give us signals. And if we can reconnect with our bodies and pay attention to them, it helps us in our bringing up awareness around our type and around our patterns of behavior and even around uh, what feels safe or unsafe to us. Uh, if you have listened to any of my teachings, you know that all of our Enneagram behaviors are behaviors that we do in defense of our true selves and our essence. They are all defense mechanisms that we are perceiving some sort of lack and then trying to fabricate for ourselves that which we perceive has been missing in our lives, whether it's goodness, whether it's help and provision, whether it's worth, whether it's significance, whether it's understanding and knowing or safety and support, whether it's satisfaction or justice or peace, Every type perceives that there's a lack in the world and then does what they need to do to fabricate that for themselves. So it's all out of a defense. It's all from a place of fear. And so when we listen to our bodies, we start understanding where our bodies feel safe, where our bodies feel afraid. And uh, I want to dig into some reasons why body work is important. And so part of body work means that we slow down which is super hard to do. Super hard for every type to do, but I think especially for aggressive or assertive types, which are eights, sevens, and threes, slowing down is gonna be one of the biggest obstacles to us for reconnecting to our bodies. But for all the types, slowing down and actually getting into our bodies is going to be a struggle because we tend to want to numb. So maybe aggressive types are just going too fast to feel the body. But withdrawing types, you don't get a free pass either because withdrawing types are typically numbing and disconnecting from their body. And dependent types are so oriented to others that they have no awareness of their own bodies. So nobody gets off a free pass when it comes to being disconnected from the body. So what we wanna do is slow down, if you're aggressive or anyone, slow down, bring awareness to your own body, which probably means you're gonna to have to be alone. 
in a space where there are not other humans around that can distract or that can pull your attention away. And then when you have, you're alone and you're putting your attention onto your own body, then what you're gonna wanna do is really feel it. Stay present to it. And stay present to what is arising. This takes so much work in one sense. It's, it's the simplest thing to just sit and be with and notice and feel and allow to arise. But so often our instincts and our patterns are to numb, to orient to others, to run ahead, to pull away, and to be with ourselves exactly where we are at can be a huge challenge. Here's my recommendation for you if you want to start doing this type of body awareness practice. Be alone, set a timer, feel into your limbs and extremities, whether you are feeling your feet on the ground, you're feeling the blood rushing through this little part of your arm, you're feeling um, the way that your hands rest on your thighs, whatever you can do to feel into your extremities and focus on that, taking deep breaths, then you can move into a practice where you go from the top of your head all the way down to your root. If you're familiar with the, the chakras, you can check in with each of your chakras. All that we're doing is sensing into the body and noticing what arises. I recommend you do this for at least five minutes and then journal afterwards what is coming up. What are you feeling? And simply journal whatever is coming up. That may sound really vague, so let me give you an example of what that would look like for me on a typical day. So when I'm doing my sensing practice and getting into my body, I get quiet, I take my deep breaths, I'm sensing throughout my body, and I may feel a pain in my heart, just like a heaviness. So I'll simply write, I'm feeling a heaviness in my heart. And then I come back and I'll feel deeply, more deeply into it. And that heaviness seems to be feeling expansive. So I'll write that. My heaviness is feeling expansive. And then I'll continue to feel into it. And I'll start to notice my thoughts being negative. Why are you feeling heavy? Nothing bad has happened. What is this expansiveness? Is it going to overtake you? And so I simply notice my thoughts around my feelings. And I journal those as well. And then I release them. And I continue to feel. And then I start to feel a little bit of tightness in my shoulders. And as I continue to go on, I'm just noticing what's there without trying to add meaning to it. That's the tricky part. Without judging it as being good or bad. And if the judgments arise, I notice them and let them go. And I just do that for, I don't know, however long that it takes. The sensing will be about five minutes and then the journaling and the rechecking in and the and the seeing what's coming up may take another five, 10 minutes. And then I move on with my day. This sensing practice is a little bit different than meditation because the intent is to get us into our bodies rather than sometimes with meditation, the intent is to transcend our bodies. Both have a place and both are wonderful. But if you are really having trouble coming into your body, a sensing practice is one that can be really helpful. It's a way to really connect and almost hyper-focus in on every sensation that you're feeling. If you're outside and you feel the breeze, if you feel the sun, if you feel um, you know, the clothes, whether they feel heavy or light, whether they're soft or scratchy, all of these things is a part of sensing back into your body and coming back home to yourself. Now this practice is something you can do daily or you can do as many as often as you like, but what will happen is as you begin to reconnect your brain and your heart to your body's sensations, as you're moving throughout your day, it will become more natural and you will become more aware of what your body is feeling in other environments. So let's say that I am with a friend and we're having a conversation and all of a sudden I sense in my body that my stomach just clenched. In the past, I may have never noticed such a thing. 
I would have blown right by it because my connection to my body was so weak. But because of the work I've been doing in my sensing practice, I feel that clenching. And I kind of stop, take a breath, and listen to what my friend is saying and realize that a story she's sharing is triggering in me some of my own pain and struggles. And that can allow me an insight that when I get home, I need to journal about that. Or I need to talk to someone about that. Or I need to talk to my friend about that in that moment and say, listen, I appreciate you sharing the story. It's bringing this up for me. Can you help me weed through it? Can you help me process what's happening? And what this does is it allows that mind, body, heart integration to happen. As our body knows, it helps us to then do some inquiry and find freedom rather than trudging through life completely unaware and blind, completely disconnected from our bodies and completely living in our heads, which usually keeps us in anxiety and keeps us overthinking and keeps us in our numbing practices, in our, you know, blowing past our emotions practices. Um, So this is a conversation that I just simply want to begin with you all. We're gonna be talking a lot more about some of the nuances when it comes to how a body practice might look for each individual type, some reasons why each individual type might need to do a body practice. But I wanna open this conversation up and present this sensing exercise to you as a way to be aware that there may even be a disconnect from your body that you may not even be aware of. That's the first thing. Do you even notice how little you notice your body, and then provide you with a simple sensing practice that you can do to simply be with your body right where it's at, allow it to feel what it feels, and simply observe. And when when that is a practice that is habitual for you, you may continue to notice that that awareness increases throughout the other environments in your life, which will again only aid in helping you to have greater awareness as to your patterns of behavior, ways that you're being stuck, and where you might want to have someone come in and help you find freedom as you're sensing your body reacting to different scenarios. Oftentimes when I'm doing coaching with my one-on-one clients, we'll dig into different parts of their life, different issues, and I'll ask them to be aware of their body's reaction. And when they tell me, oh, that question you just asked made me start sweating, Or that question you just asked, I noticed my heart beating quickly. Or that question you just asked, I feel tense and tight. Or my stomach is clenching. All of those things are practices that we do inside of my coaching um, sessions. And that is the body giving us clues before our mind or our heart might even be aware that there's an issue. That's a gift. That's a gift to us. Now we can listen to our bodies, support our bodies, hold our bodies, and then do the work to understand why we are reacting. And ultimately, as with all of our Enneagram work, the goal is freedom. We want freedom to be fully authentically expressed, to be able to work through triggers as they come with health and with wholeness. Um, And so reconnecting to the body is something we have got to explore. Thanks for listening, and you will definitely hear more from me about this later.